Welcome to another episode of The Latest with Maya. Today, I am very excited to be having a conversation with actor and comedian Tim Bagley. Tim has been in so many different projects. He played Larry in Will and Grace, which is my all-time favorite show, and has guest starred in too many shows to mention, including two of my other favorites, One Day at a Time and Grimm. Um, thank you so much for being on my show. I'm so excited to be talking with you. Well, thanks, Maya. I'm excited to be talking to you. Thanks for having me. Yeah, um, so let's get started. Um, okay. What three words best describe you? Oh, um, uh, best describe me or my work? Me? Yes. <laughs> I would say, um, uh, I would say funny. Yeah. Or, or fun, make it short, just say fun. Um, uh, serious. Mm -hmm. And uh, mm, uh, I don't one word. What's a word for like a lot to wrangle? Um, <laughs> like, uh, shenanigans. How about that? Oh, I love that. <laughs> um, so, what motivates you even on days when you aren't really feeling it? When I'm not really feeling it, what motivates me is, you know, paying off those hardwood floors. Mm. You know? <laughs> uh, uh, and let's see, uh, you know, a lot of times when, um, you know, I ultimately always feel so grateful for my job. I'm really grateful for my job. So there's not a lot. Um, it doesn't take a lot to make me enjoy my work. Um, I, I, it's hard to think of a job that I haven't really found something to enjoy about it. So, uh, and as far as just my life, uh, what motivates me when it's difficult is, um, you know, other people, friends, uh, connecting with, with people. And uh, I tend to be very hopeful and very glass half full kind of personality. Um, uh, so I always kind of find that positive spin on something. So if life is difficult, I just always look at what I can be grateful for and what I can hang on to that makes me feel good and positive. Yeah. Oh, I love that. Yeah, my um, family and I are the same way whenever something is just not, uh, whenever there's something that's, not very good that's happening. We just look at that. We always manage to find a positive side. And, yeah, you know. yeah. You know, Maya, my, my, here's an example of that. I, I noticed, um, well, my mom passed away in October, but she was 97 and she had all five of her kids around her and she was, you know, smart and funny and I don't know, she she passed in her sleep. So whereas some of my siblings are still kind of depressed about all the all of it, I feel like 97 years, I just look at it as such a gift for for her and for all of us to have her for 97 years. And I feel I focus on the fact that we were all able to be there because during the actor strike, I just went home and I was able to spend two months there with her. And um and so I just kind of look at it all like a blessing and in a positive way so that it's not overwhelmingly sad to me. You know what I mean? Yeah. 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 Oh, I well, I'm really sorry to hear about your oh, mom. Thank you, Maya. I appreciate that. Yeah. Um, but I am really I'm really inspired about the finding you know, looking at the positive instead yeah. of letting sadness consume you. I feel like it's kind of a choice. You know, there, um, 
it's kind of a choice that you can make. Um, sometimes people get so lost in the sadness that it's so depressing and it's really, you need help. You need professional help, someone to talk to or antidepressants or something like that. And, and if ever I was at that place, um, again, I, you know, I had that years ago, but I would not hesitate calling on a professional for help, but most of the time I can manage myself. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so, uh, yeah, I had, um, since a young age, my mom has always taught me and my sister, there's always something to, um, like some joy to be found in whatever situation you're going through. And a couple years ago, when I found out uh, my tumor was back, I just went through a couple days where I just, I, I was so like kind of consumed with anxiety and fear and like it just felt everything was so heavy. And then after a couple days, I just like, I woke up one day and I was like, I'm done feeling this way. It's not fun. I am gonna, I want to go enjoy things. And just like, I was just like, I can't change what happened, but, or what's happening, but I have a choice on how I can, like my attitude and everything going forward. Exactly. And it's very inspiring, you know, what you've done with your life and how you've made choices. And, and you know, um, it's why I, I was looking forward to talking to you. I just look at you and I see this bright spirit. And uh, so, you know, you've, you know, that kind of uh, decision to look for the joy, like you said, that your mom taught you and your sister. To me, that's, it's so important. And look at what you've created, you know? Thank you so much. That that means a lot to hear. Thank you. Of course. Um, so do you have any daily or uh, weekly rituals? Uh, yeah, I um sure. I I like to work out and go for walks and yeah. I like to do that physical kind of stuff because it it uh, makes me feel good. Yeah. Um, I always keep a daily list of things I've got to get done. Yeah. And I kind of go through that list, but that structure kind of helps me. And, um, and I always have a quote at the top of the list, you know, some kind of quote that, you know, I keep you, you know, for a few weeks at a time. Um, whether it's, you know, uh, be the change that you want to see in life, you know, the, the Gandhi quote, or uh, uh, I liked uh, for a while I had a nice nin, life expands and contracts in proportion to one's courage. Um, I have little inspirational things. Uh, I have one, the one I have right now is Sean Hayes said to me one time, um, uh, why wait? do it now and and i and so that's the one that i've got on there right now and uh yeah yeah let's see and then rituals um i like to um have coffee in the morning mm, yeah. kind of reflect and uh, sometimes pray and kind of think about things i'm grateful for and uh um and and kind of focus on what I need to get done that day. Yeah. Oh, I love that. Yeah. Um, so who has had the biggest impact on the person you have become? Hmm. I would have to say my mom. My mom is was very funny and smart, and she was um a very fierce uh advocate for me always um and i was thinking about this actually recently um when i was young for example there was a 
a, a guy across the street who was a few years older and um, he used to kind of pick on me. And one time in the winter, I remember he, he and a couple of his friends shoved me down and they took my shoes. And so I had to walk home from school in the snow, you know, like in my stocking feet. And I got home and my mom was like, where are your shoes? And I had to tell her, she made me tell her, you know, uh, that this guy, Steve had taken them. And so I, so then she called a meeting with Steve's mom and dad, and then his sister who was in my class, and then my siblings were all there. And I remember during the meeting, I didn't want to hear all this. She got him to apologize to me. She got him to, you know, say he wouldn't pick on me anymore. Like all this was going on and they were talking about it and I didn't want to be there. So I found these, this box of Kleenex that was right in front of me. And I was making these like little things, like little, you know, flowers out of Kleenex. And, you know, like I was, and made ghosts and I was playing around with the ghosts and they would go to each other's homes and visit and do stuff. And so when everybody left, my dad was like, you know, what the hell was going on with the ghosts? Like, what were you, or no, he goes, what were you doing with the Kleenex? What, what the hell was going on with the Kleenex? And I said, I was just playing ghosts. And my mom, I remember she said, um, uh, well, they looked like they were having a lot of fun. And I said, yeah. And she goes, what were they doing? And I said, well, they were going to each other's apartments and homes and having tea and stuff. And she was like, oh, they sounded like really fun ghosts. Let's go eat. And she just kind of uh, didn't, you know, make me feel bad about the fact that I wanted to go somewhere else. You know what I mean? Yeah. Yeah. So I think about that story. And I mean, that's kind of a metaphor for for how she always kind of was an advocate for me, you know? Yeah. Oh, I love that. Yeah. Yeah. And then she was funny and smart and yeah. told me I could do anything I wanted to do and not to let you know, society or church or any kind of thing stop me, you know, just do what you want to do. And uh, gave me that sense of, I think much like probably a lot like your mom does with you, just that sense of, you know, there are no limitations. And to have somebody like that um, it, in your life is, uh, is really a gift. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Um, so what in your life brings you the most joy? Huh. Uh, uh, probably my friends and my family. And I really enjoy performing and I, I love it. I love to make people laugh. I love laughter and I, I I like um yeah I really enjoy laughter and and uh playfulness and that kind of thing uh and I've got really good friends and uh and so probably what brings me the most joy are, are my friends yeah oh I love that yeah um so if you had a warning label, what would yours say? Uh, trouble. <laughs> it, would, it would flash and it would say trouble, trouble, trouble. <laughs> oh, I love just, that. <laughs> just to give people a heads up that there's, you know, yeah. there, there could be, you know, they could be stepping into some shenanigans. Yeah, <laughs> I love that. Yeah, I I think I probably need two warning labels. That what are your warning labels? What are yours? I feel like mine would be like the first one would be like prone to anxiety, don't overload. <laughs> oh, and, that's uh, and the other one would be obsessively talks about pop culture. So <laughs> okay. okay. Yeah. That's funny. <laughs> Yeah. yeah those are both very very good ones i like that don't overload i like that <laughs> thank you that's really yeah. good <laughs> yeah um so 
I am pop culture obsessed and I go in stages of shows that I cannot stop watching. What show are you currently obsessed with? Oh, wow. Um, well, I mean, I love, you know, there's so many good shows. Um, I really, uh, I love Fargo. I love Succession. Uh, there's so many great shows. Uh, but, you know, sometimes to unwind, I will watch shows that are just like Naked and Afraid or um, I don't know. It makes me feel good when I know that I can break open a bag of Fritos while they're starving and I, <laughs> I can sleep in my comfortable bed while they're, you know, in torrential rains being attacked by mosquitoes and stuff. It just, I don't know. Um I like every once in a while a really fluffy reality show. Um, I watched recently five episodes of this show called Naked Attraction that's British. And then I thought, no, I can't do it anymore. Um, um, I like the four ladies, what is that called? My 1000 pound uh, best friends. Uh, I like those ladies because they're very inspirational. They help each other to lose weight and um, yeah. uh, and they go through these experiences. I know it's ridiculous, but you know, I watch a lot of work, you know, work related things. I watch shows and movies for work reasons, but every once in a while, there's nothing like a, you know, ridiculous reality show to yeah. kind of cleanse everything and make you feel like, Wow, I've got it really good. <laughs> you yeah. know? Do you know what, I mean? what? Do you know what I mean? Yeah, I do. <laughs> I love that. What yeah, show I... do you watch? I'm curious. Oh, uh, right now. Well, right now I'm finishing. Uh, I'm finishing watching Grimm. Um, I'm on season five. Um. So I'm watching that, and then uh, with my mom and my sister, we're watching a mini series called The Artful Dodger. Oh yeah. Um, that's really good. And then uh, with my mom, I we've started watching two shows. We've started watching the new Netflix show, The Brother's Son. Oh yeah. Um, which is really good. And then we're watching um a little bit of an older show called Louder Milk. Um, oh, I haven't heard of that one. Yeah, I um hadn't heard of it either, but it just came on Netflix and it's with Ron Livingston, who oh, I yeah. love. Mm -hmm. Um so I my mom uh watched a couple episodes of it when it was on, but I've never seen it. So we're watching that show now. Oh, that's good. That's good. The the next one I want to see, I think it's called Fellow Travelers or something like that. Yeah. I want to yeah. see that one. And uh and then I also I, I'm behind on the crown. I wanna you know, I haven't seen the last season of Crown, so I, the Crown. So I want to watch that, and then I think it's called Fellow Travelers. Yeah. With Matt Bomer, and yeah, so that yeah. one looks good to me. Yeah. Um, and I'll I'll see what else, but then, um, oh, here's one for you. Uh, I don't know if you've seen it or not, but um. That first season, I'm not in the first season, but it's called Somebody Somewhere with Bridget Everett oh, yeah. and Jeff Hiller. And um, and it's on HBO. And I saw the first season, you know, when it aired, and I really liked it. Then they called me out of the blue and asked me to be on the second season. So I'm in the second season, and now uh we're getting ready to start shooting the third season um in February and March. And so I'm really looking forward to, you know, to that. I just got the scripts. And so um, it's just a beautiful, really simple, kind of pure Midwestern show. And it's just, uh, uh, I just love it. It's it's just, I love it. Oh, 
Wow, that's so cool. Yeah, I um, I've heard of that show, and I think I've watched. Um, my mom watches that show and loves it, and so I think I've watched one episode, and I really like it. So I need to go watch yeah. some more. I um, start at the it... beginning. Start at the beginning because that first oh. season is just so it sets everybody up so well, and it's just beautiful. But I don't come in till the second episode of the second season. Okay. Yeah, I'll have to, um, once I finish Grimm, I'll have to go watch okay. that. <laughs> yeah, um, uh, yeah, I love Bridget Everett. She's in one of my favorite movies, so. Which one? <laughs> it's a Netflix movie called Little Evil. Oh, I haven't seen that one. Yeah, it's with Adam Scott. Um, oh, I love and, Adam Scott. Yeah. Me too. And it's it's so funny. Um, yeah. <laughs> There's one that she did called Patty Cakes that kind of I saw and it's one that, you know, I, I'm sure it's streaming somewhere, <clears throat> but that was one of the first things she did and it's really good. I, I just think she's fantastic. Yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah, and I actually just um a couple months ago, I watched, it's not a, it's an older show. It was on like 10 years ago, but I had never heard of it called The Tomorrow People. Oh, I've um, not heard of that either. Um, yeah, it was only on for one season, which I'm really bummed about because I, I binge watched it all like really <laughs> quickly. Um, I just became obsessed with it. And so I was just like, but I want more of this story. I want more. Yeah. Oh, that's interesting when that happens, you know, when there's yeah. just one season. And I've had that feeling too. And it's a yeah. disappointing thing. Oh, one show I really want to watch that I haven't seen yet is Beef. Oh, Did yeah. Did you see that by any chance? I haven't. Not yet, but I want to. I yeah. did want to watch that. Yeah, I'm going to watch that coming up yeah. soon too yeah. yeah do you know what i'm doing right now right now what i've been doing i've never listened to a book on tape before but um i'm listening to barbara streisand's book on tape and she reads it and she adds stuff to it and she and they play old early recordings of her and stuff and it's really been enjoyable so that's kind of what i've been doing with any off time i've just been yeah kind of listening to that book because it's really long it's you know I'm not even halfway through it and it, it's I think 900 and some pages but it's really interesting and it's really interesting to hear in her words yeah oh I love that yeah I um yeah right now I'm reading uh I'm slowly reading a book um that I uh called Kissing Kosher oh I've and heard of that yeah yeah, that I love it. It's so good. I am just such a slow reader. So yeah. I, no matter what I do, I just, I can't read very fast. Like I was reading the book with um, a friend of mine got a copy of it and we were reading it together. And she got through it, I think, in two days. And I was like, I'm still on the single digits chapters. <laughs> um, <Yeah. so. laughs> I'm kind of like that, too. It takes me a while. But I also really like to um, read. I, I like the process of, you know, how your own individual mind kind of takes you on the journey that you go on with that book. And it's going to be different with everybody else. And sometimes people are really fast readers, but I kind of take my time. And if I, if, you know, I go back and look at, you know, something to figure out what happened here again. And, you know, I, I, I kind of spend time with a book like that. Yeah. Well, I love that. Yeah. Um, so what song, no matter how many times you hear it can always make you emotional? Oh, emotional. Well, um, oh gosh, there's so many. I mean, to me, music is 
such a part of my life. There's one song that always can pick me up, and that's um, do -do 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 uh, you get the best of my love. Whoa, 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 whoa. I like that. Um, I like uh, do you remember? Oh, yeah, a uh, uh, September, um, emotional, you know, there's an Elton John song that is, um, what is it? Um, love. It's about love. Um, and it was, uh, I had a partner who passed away in 1995 and it was his favorite song and he wanted to hear it over and over and over before he went into the fine, into the hospital for his final days. And I remember he played it over and over in the living room and it's called, I think it's just called Love or I Believe in Love. And it's an Elton John song. And so um, that one, whenever I hear it, I just have to hear the first couple notes and it just, you know, breaks my heart open. Yeah. But there are, there are, you know, to me, music is such a part of our lives. Um, yeah. Is it like that for you? Yeah, it, it definitely is. There's, I mean, there's so many artists that I love. I have a few in particular that just, their music has just been a, such a huge part of my life. Yeah. Um, so I, yeah, there I have Ooh. a bunch of songs. Oh Maya, who's somebody that you influences your life? Um, ben Platt. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. Yeah, his music has just helped me through so much. Um, oh, and good. yeah. Um, and then Taylor Swift. Um, yeah. And. Are you a Swifty? Are you do you consider yes. yourself a Swifty? Okay. <laughs> yes, I do. Yeah. My um sister and I are huge uh Swifties. And That's my mom true. is a Swifty too. So oh, good. Good <laughs> <for her. laughs> yeah. Um, and uh yeah, there's uh, there's just a lot of artists that I um yeah, just have had such an influence on my life. Like then there's Macy Peters and oh, yeah. um Asher Angel. Um oh. and yeah. Those are all good people. So. Um uh if somebody if you know like there's been I've got so many favorite singers, but there's I've yeah. oh, I always liked Shaka Khan and I remember as a young man kind of hearing her and just thinking there was something special about her voice and so I yeah. I know all her songs I had all her records and but then yeah. you know as life goes on you know there are so many people new people that come into the mix um that are so good um yeah. and so I I I feel like every you know, part of my life, there are certain songs or artists that go along with whatever is going on in your life. Yeah, yeah definitely. There are, um, I know there are a lot of Ben Platt songs that just whenever I listen to, like, it takes me back to the moment, like, a moment in time where I listen to the song like over and over and I can remember exactly how I was feeling exactly what was going on mm -hmm. um, so Maya do you ever sing along with the songs and everything yes always yeah, good. <laughs> yeah. I, I feel like it's good for our spirit to sing along yeah it, it definitely is yeah I I am not uh, I can't sing, but that doesn't stop me. It doesn't matter. I can't either, but I I still do it, and it feels good. Yeah, it does. Um, you know, he's got. Did you ever see the musical that he did? Did you? I yeah, I didn't um get to like actually see it, but uh, I remember when it first came when the movie came out, uh, my family and I 
went to go see it for uh, mine and my sister's birthday. Oh, nice. Um, so, yeah. <laughs> so you saw him do the movie, and that's good. That's really good, because yeah. then you got to see him. Yes. Good. Yeah. But, uh, yeah, seeing him do it live was really special. Um, uh, he's He's got a beautiful voice. I think he's originally from Orange County. I think he's from California. Oh, cool. But yeah. um, he's uh, yeah, he's a he's got a beautiful voice. Yeah, does yeah. My um, goal is to one day I want to see him live. <laughs> well, you should ha figure out how to contact him and see if he'll talk to you on here. Yeah, I've actually been trying to figure that out for. I think since Dear Evan Hansen came out, so <laughs> I'm still working on that. Yeah, keep trying, keep trying. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you, yeah. I, the persistence I pays off, it pays off. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Thank you, yeah. I am, um, yeah, I'm very persistent. I usually won't stop uh, like reaching out to someone until I hear, get an answer back no matter what the answer is so that's good that's a good quality thank you um so what genre of movie would your life story be told as uh well it depends on who does it you know somebody might do it as a comedy but um I would think probably a drama, yeah. but with lots of humor. Yeah. Dramedy. Yeah. Oh, I love that. Yeah. Um, yeah, I think mine would probably have to be, I don't know, I feel like maybe a dark comedy because my family and I, we have so with everything, you know, we've gone through, we have such a warped sense of humor. Um, and so even in the worst, uh, even in like not great circumstances, we can usually somehow laugh at something. Um, yeah, that's how, that's how my family is too. And my mom was really like that. And um, isn't that a gift? It's like, you know, yeah. with all that you've gone through, you know, um, it's such a nice thing to be able to have a sense of humor yeah, you know, about everything and to have a yeah. family that kind of embraces that humor. It's a, yeah. it's a wonderful gift. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Um, so is there something from your childhood that you often find yourself nostalgic for? Um, oh, that's an interesting question. Uh, yeah, we used to take drives as a family and we would go like drive. Uh, it sounds, it's going to sound horrible, but we would drive to the dump and we would watch, you know, bear come out, bears come out and they would root through the trash and it was just fun to see them. And then there was a wildlife refuge and we'd go at sunset and watch the deer come out and mm -hmm. and we'd all cram into the station wagon and do this and it was uh quiet a lot of times we'd have to whisper and be quiet and stuff but um uh uh, uh there's no i don't do anything like that in my life now but that's something that from my childhood that i always really um enjoyed that family time together when we were all piled in the car looking at bear bears rooting through the trash yeah oh i love that yeah. how about you um oh i don't know actually i um i don't know i often um oh I actually have never thought about that. I know, it's a good question. I never really have thought about it. That's, that's the first thing that kind of came into my mind, but it is something to think about, you know, some childhood memory that you you said that you miss, you know, now from your childhood, yeah. right? Yeah. It's an interesting question. Yeah. 
<laughs> Thank you. Yeah. Um, so what is something people are always surprised to learn about you? Uh, um, that when I first started, I was a, a dancer. I danced with Mitzi Gaynor for a year touring the country and then with Anne Margaret for one summer in Las Vegas. And, you know, I, 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 I was a dancer and then, um, I shifted out of that and started taking acting classes and, yeah. um, but, uh, people always seem to be surprised that that's how I started it off. Oh yeah. 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 Oh, that's so cool. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Um, and also a lot of times people are surprised because I do comedy and stuff that there's a, a, a serious side to me. They expect, you know, you to be more on a lot of times, you know, yeah. and a lot of times in real life, um, you know, I, I've got a, a, a more serious side than yeah. say like the character that you said you like Larry from Will and Grace, you know, he's, he was kind of um, just always funny and kind of, <laughs> you know what I mean? Yeah. And so, um, so sometimes people are surprised to see that side of me. Yeah, yeah. Um, so I love inspiring and motivational quotes. And this week, I'm not sure that, I don't think the quote I have is really either, but it's one that spoke to me. Um, it's by a poet that I recently found named Mark Anthony. And it says, my favorite kind of people are the ones who let me be as crazy as I am. That, that what, say that again, my favorite kinds of people are what? Yeah, um, my favorite kind of people are the ones who let me be as crazy oh. as I am. I like that. Yeah, sorry, yeah. I realized I didn't really enunciate the word. No, yeah, so. It was great, but but the word I was curious about was that let me be, you know, that let me yeah. be. That was the word that I wasn't sure if that's what you what it was, but I like that because it's it suggests that um that you know there are people around that don't want you to be a certain way yeah and you do want to surround yourself with people that let you be as crazy as you want to be i mean i love that idea yeah me too mm -hmm. yeah that um, that part of you that embrace that part of you yeah yeah definitely yeah. Um, is there a quotation that has inspired you lately? Well, the last one that I had on my little, remember I said I have a little yeah. thing on it, and I memorized it, and I mentioned it earlier, and I'll tell you why I like it. It was by Anais Nin, and I like it because she said, life expands and contracts in proportion to one's courage. What I like about that is it suggests that if you want an expansive life, if you want a, uh, a bigger life, you kind of have to be brave. And it doesn't say it, but it suggests that everybody has obstacles and things that hold them back, whether they're personal, you know, self-inflicted obstacles, or if the world is out there saying, no, you are not welcome, you know, in this arena. But it suggests that you have to kind of be brave. You have to kind of, um, uh you know go after what you want and yeah. and uh, in spite of the obstacles and that's what i like about that quote uh, it makes me feel like everybody has fears or obstacles or whatever but that it's the ones that are able to uh be find courage yeah. that um are able to have a more expansive experience yeah. on earth. And I, I, I just, I like that concept. And so I had that on my little quote list for a while. Oh, I love that. Yeah. 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 We, have, we have to find our ways to be brave, you know? Yeah. Push, yeah. Past, push past what we 
think are limitations. You yeah. Know? Or yeah. What, what society might say is a limitation or what, you know, you might feel is a limitation. You just have to kind of go, nope, I'm not going to look at that as a limitation. I'm going to find courage and I'm going to go through it. Yeah. Yeah. Right? Yeah, absolutely. Um, yeah, I I love that. Go ahead. Yeah. Um, yeah. And I absolutely uh, agree with that. I um, Yeah, I've had um, like doctors and people tell me there's certain things I might like when I was younger that I might not be able to do. And it was my mom and I would both be like, we'll see. <laughs> um, I, um, yeah. yeah. <laughs> there was a, a, one of my friends that I had for many, many years was a woman named Zelda Rubenstein. And she was a little person and she was in poltergeist, um, uh, um, she played a medium and, 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 and if you know that movie, she says like, you know, go towards the light, Carol Ann. Anyway, so, um, she was in an acting class with me early on and then she got that movie and I was able to kind of see her get an agent and, you know, and she had so many obstacles and she was in medical books because she was born, she was a little person. She was born without a diaphragm. And all the medical journals said she won't live past eight or nine or something like that. And, you know, she lived till, I think she, when she died, I think she was 75 or 76. She had a whole life. And and people kept telling her that she's, you know, physically she couldn't continue on. Um, she just kept defying them. Yeah. And, uh, and, and she was a great inspiration for me because I saw this person who was older, you know, and and got a job. And all of a sudden she had wanted to be an actor and she was taking classes. And all of a sudden she started working and, you know, working more and more. And it just made me feel like, well, it could happen for me too. And so she was always an inspiration to me. But I know that in medical books, she showed me where it said, they said she wouldn't live past 20 and then she wouldn't live past you know 40 and all this stuff. And she just kept defying all the odds. Yeah. Wow. That's incredible. Yeah. She was very inspirational. Her name was uh, Zelda Rubenstein. Oh, wow. I love that. Mm -hmm. yeah. Yeah. Um, well, I... I uh, had the best time talking with you. This has just made my day. I seriously can't tell you how much it's meant to me. So thank you. Well, thank you, Maya. You're an inspiration to me and I appreciate you. And I um, I appreciate your persistence in, you know, reaching out to me and everything. And, um, you know, uh, I like that you talked about your mom and some of the stuff she passed on to you and your sister. That's awesome. And just keep up the good work. Oh, thank you. Thank All you right. so much. And have a great 2024. You too. All right. Let's make that pact. We're going to have a really good 2024. Yes. Okay. <laughs> yeah. All right. Okay. Thank Take you. Care. You too. Okay, thank you. Thank you. Okay, bye. Bye. -bye. Yeah, bye. <laughs> and that's a wrap on today's edition of The Latest with Maya.